another day, another research article. Here we go. So let's take a look at EDS and hypermobility dysfunctions in pregnancy, birth, and beyond. Basically, what I've been saying. Now, EDS and postpartum are kind of similar. Basically, both of these people groups are hypermobile and their connective tissue is a little bit looser. If you have EDS and your postpartum, do not despair. Just be a little more patient and let's look at this. Oh, by the way, this is from the British Journal of Midwifery, and the title of this article is a clinical update on hypermobile EDS. You know, I love to start with the abstract. So they are talking about, if you take a look, that hypermobility syndrome happens in 1 in 20 pregnancies globally per year. As such, cases in maternity services should no longer be considered rare what they're saying is EDS isn't rare. I told you. This article updates and builds upon a previous international review of maternity care considerations for those childbearing with hypermobility in EDS, finding points to a need for individualized care. So let's start at the top. Connective tissue is present throughout the body and acts as a fabric-like support holding every joint, muscle, and organ in place. It forms the extracellular matrix, providing structural support to your cells. As such, conditions which impact upon the functionality of connective tissue may be significant consequences in childbearing, where the human body and its tissues must adapt significantly to grow and birth a baby. The Erlos Downlos syndromes are a group of inheritable multi-systemic conditions which affect connective tissues throughout the body. Most subtypes of EDS are rare, but hypermobile EDS alongside the related hypermobile spectrum, that's the people that don't get the genetic test marker, are no longer considered rare because they're half my practice, y'all. As recent work has shown, a diagnosed prevalence rate of 1 in 500 on the contrary, hypermobile EDS appears to be only rarely diagnosed. So it's not uncommon, it is rarely diagnosed. As only 5% of cases are successfully identified, 5% of hypermobile cases are identified. Five. Now let's contrast that article with this one. Ready? So this is from the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Pregnancy Outcomes in Women with EDS. Okay, let's take a look. Wait for this. The results of this study. Of the total of 13,881,592 births in our cohort, only 910 deliveries were to women with EDS. Women with EDS were more likely to be Caucasian, earn a higher income, and smoke. Okay. Do you know why they were women with a higher income? Because they could fight for their diagnosis. And do you know why you, they probably smoked? Because when you are hypermobile, you have uncontrollable anxiety. Because how would you like it if your body was constantly coming apart? Okay. So we're going to get back to the article. Births to women with EDS were more likely to be premature. Pregnancies complicated by EDS were more likely to be associated with cervical incompetence, basically meaning your cervix can't keep it together, placenta previa, or antepartum hemorrhage. Okay, so that makes sense because even the blood vessels are stretchy. Pregnant women with EDS were also more likely to be delivered by cesarean, as well as stay longer than seven days in the hospital. Wait for this conclusion. Pregnant women with EDS are at a higher risk of antepartum hemorrhage, placenta previa, cervical incompetence, preterm birth, as well as delivering by cesarean section. These risks should be taken into consideration and they should be surveyed. But I have a little bit of a hang up with this. Thir out of 13 million women, they only found 910 deliveries. Who allowed this to be published without a better discussion and talk about lack of diagnosis in their conclusion? This is ridiculous. 
Although I am thankful that they did talk about the incompetent cervix and placenta previa. Like, I am thankful for that. But this is why you have to read research.